The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 39, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 12th of September, 1973, in London, England. Translation Thus far I have declared to you the analytical knowledge of Sankhya philosophy. Now listen to the knowledge of yoga, whereby one works without fruitive result. O son of Pritha, when you act by such intelligence, you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Ishate avihita sankhe buddhi yogi tu iman sino buddhya juktu jaya patha karma bandham prahasthi. Karma bandham. You act something and there is reaction. That is called karma bandham. We can understand very easily. Whatever you act, there is the action. Good act or bad, there are two things. So, while in this body we act piously, then our future is very good. If we act impiously, then our future is not very good. So, Actually, we should act piously, not in piety. That is human life. We should know what kind of action we should do. In the sixteenth chapter of the Gita, you'll find prabhittincha nivittincha navidu asurajana. Those who are osuras, they do not know what kind of action should be done and what kind of action should not be. Not that anything I like at my things, that is not. At least for human being, he should not be. Even in the state laws, if you act whimsically, whatever you like, you will be liable to so many difficulties. And what to speak of, a spiritual life. So Krishna has described so far Sankha Yoga means analytical study of the soul and the body. Yes, very nicely. So, this analytical study of the soul and body means so far he has described the activities of the body. That is Sankha Yoga. It's like a medical man has got full analysis, not full to a portion, of this body, the anatomy, physiology, they have studied how the veins are working, how the pine secretion is transforming into blood, how the heart is working. This is called analytical study. Isate Ovita Shankhe. So far the body is concerned, that is now fully analyzed. Now, Buddha Yoga Timatma, the another Department of knowledge. Buddhi Yoga. Buddhi Yoga means spiritual life. That is Buddhi Yoga. Just like you will find in the tenth chapter, Krishna says to Arjuna, Buddhi Yoga Dadanitam. When there is talk between the spirit, supreme spirit Krishna and the individual spirit, subordinate spirit, the living entity. Krishna is the supreme being and we are subordinate beings. So these people at the present moment, they do not know. But we have to take instruction from Veda. Nitya, Nityanam, Chitana, Chitana, Nam. The supreme being, He is Ekoju Bhunam, Vividhati Kaman. He is supplying the necessities of life, karma, whatever we require. There are so many things for birds, bees, human beings, different types of fruits, flowers, milk, everything is being supplied by Krishna. Therefore, he is supreme being. How he can be supreme? Just like in a family, 
the father is considered to be supreme. Why? Because he takes care of the whole family. He is supreme. Similarly, the supreme person, Krishna, he takes care of the whole creation, material and spiritual, in whatever universes. That what we see. So when we act according to the direction of the Supreme, because we are subordinate, this is our position. The subordinate position is that he must act according to the direction of the Master or the Supreme. That is natural. Everyone is acting like that. So that is called buddhi yoga When you act according to the direction of the Supreme, Krishna, or He is represented, and that is called buddhi That is real. Buddhi means interior. And yoga means linking, connecting. The tenth chapter will find Pisam Satyuktanam Bhajatam Atriti Purvakam Buddhi Yogam Dadavetam Jinu Mamu Pujanti De. There is the Buddhi Yoga, one word. And here is also the Buddhi Yoga. So what is that Buddhi Yoga? Krishna says, Pisam Satyuktanam, persons who are twenty-four hours engaged, Satyaka. Satyaka means all. Engaged. What kind of engagement? Bhajatana Triti Purvakam. And this engagement means always trying to render some service to the law. How? Triti Purvakam. With love and faith. Not that I have to do it. Uh, let me do No. Oh, I have to do it. Let me do it nicely. Unless there is love, you cannot do it nicely, any matter, in the material world also. Unless you have got some attachment for something, you cannot act it very nice. Just like a musician. Because one has got good attachment for music, he tries to perform it very perfectly. So love is the basis. Similarly, when you serve Krishna, if you have no love for Krishna, you cannot serve him very nicely. And Krishna also does not accept your uh, service if it is not done in great love and affection. That is the basic thing. Krishna does not require your service. He is self-sufficient. He has got many servants anywhere and everywhere. So, Krishna does not require our service. It is our interest. If we render service to Krishna, then we become happy. That is the problem. Tisham satatujyuktana vajatam kriti purvakam. Just like we find in another verse, Krishna says, patram puspam phalam toyam yomi bhakta prajitsati. Jumi bhakta prajitsati. Anyone who offers me in love and faith a little flower, a little water, a little fruit, patram pustam phalam toyam, patram pustam phalam toyam, jumi bhaktya prajitsati. This is the real point. Krishna, the supreme person who is giving all the necessities of all the living entities, he is actually the provider, maintainer of everyone. So why he is asking a little fruit, flower and water from you? Is he hungry? No. Jo me bhakta city just to induce you again to love Krishna. That is the point. Because your this material condition is bhutta bhutta pradyate, subjected to birth, death, old age, disease, and so many other material conditions. You are fallen in this condition because you have forgotten Krishna. Just like 
Last night so many people came to discuss with that, but they are not interested in talking of Krishna. They are interested how their sense gratification will be disturbed by starting this thing. That is their concern. Here we have come to preach about Krishna. They did not ask anything about Krishna, what is his philosophy, what is his Krishna philosophy. No. They are simply interested in their own sense gratification. That's all. How their sense gratification will be disturbed, they are concerning that. This is the position of the material world. Everyone is simply interested in sense gratification. That's all. There is no question now asking what is God, what I am, what is this world. Actually, this should be the question of human life. Atharatu Brahma Jiddhyam. We should be engaged always in inquiring about the Supreme Being, the Absolute Truth. That is their only business. But you see, the whole world, they are simply busy how to satisfy their sins. This is the cause of all that. Krishna Bhriya Jeeva Bhoga Manchak Pare Pasate Maya Kare Japoti as Hall. There are many quotations. Because we have forgotten Krishna, therefore we are now under the clutches of Maya. So we have forgotten Krishna, we are suffering, but because we are part and parcel of Krishna, Krishna comes to canvas. Then why you are suffering? You just surrender unto me. I will give you all protection. No, there is nothing. There is nothing. Therefore, when one is trained up to how to surrender to Krishna, that is called devotional surrender. Practice. Practice. And when actually one is very sincere to serve Krishna, Krishna is within Everyone ah, is sort of uh, sort of Bhutana with this Arjuna Tishthati. Uh, see, he can understand whether you are sincerely serving or with some motive you are serving. Even with a motive you serve Krishna, it will never go in there. Krishna is so kind. Just like Putana. Putana wanted to serve Krishna by feeding Krishna with her breast. But the purpose was, the breast was poison. So Krishna would serve the male and he would die. There is a different motive. But still Krishna is so kind that he thought that this rascal Putana, she wanted to kill me, but she does not know that I am not a person to be killed. Uh, but still, although the motive was to kill me, but she has served me to suck her breast or drunk her milk. So she is my mother. So she is my mother. Never mind, she came with a motive. So this is the Krishna consciousness benefit. Of course, we should not have any motive. Kamsa, Kamsa just like he was simply thinking of Krishna. He was Krishna conscious, fully, always thinking of Krishna. But the motive was to kill. The still conscious got liberation. Because he was constantly thinking of Krishna. But that is not bhakti. Bhakti is the same thinking of Krishna favorable. Anukullena Krishna nu silaram. That is bhakti. To think of Krishna as enemy, that is not required. One may think, but a devotee, how can he think of Krishna as enemy? He thinks of Krishna as friend, as son, as master, as lover. A devotee thinks like that. Whereas a devotee or an enemy of Krishna, he is always thinking of, this is the difference we think. Dima and devote. Dima is thinking how to wipe out, how to banish Krishna, how to kill Krishna. They don't want Krishna. That is demonic. So therefore they do not know that a demonic person is always suffering. 
that is due to his forgetfulness of Krishna. But because his demand is continuing the business, therefore they do not know. Nati virus, that is also. Nati virus, hatha gatim hi vishnu. Pravitting cha, nevitting cha. Navidu asura jana. Asura jana. Those are usuras. They do not know what to do and what not to do. Therefore, one has to learn how to leave, what to know, what to forget. Every educational or progressive method has got do's and do nots. So the Osuras they do not know what they should do and what they should not do. That is Osura. And a devotee, he knows what to do and what not to do. That is, no illicit sex. That is, do not. But there is do also that if you one sex life, then get yourself married according to religious principle, uh, get a wife and beget nice children, that is do. And no illicit sex, that is do not, side by side. You do not take intoxicants, that is do not. But you take Krishna prasadam and be intoxicated uh, with Krishna's love. That is do. Similarly, you do not indulge in gambling, but you indulge in gambling. What is that gambling? That gambling is dedicate your life to Krishna and see the result. That is also gambling. That is also gambling. Uh, because everyone is engaged in his own business, but if he is advised to give up his business, you take to this Krishna business. That is also gambling, because he does not know what will happen. So everything has do and do not. So we have to give up this do not and accept the do, positive and negative. Then, therefore, in the tenth chapter it is said, Tisam satatu juktanam bhajatam atriti purvava. By somewhere or other who has become engaged in devotion and service, Twenty-four hours. Satatam means twenty-four hours. Sadhujuktana, we pay and engage in Krishna's service. Krishna will be, actually, He will be merciful upon me. He will deliver me from this miserable condition of material life. Tisam Satatujuktana Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. So Krishna is living, you cannot deceive Krishna. That is not possible. Krishna is the supreme. If you are deceiver, Krishna is also the supreme deceiver. And if you are lover, then Krishna is the supreme lover. You deal with Krishna as you deal is also he reciprocates. That is Krishna. So Krishna is describing now. Buddhi yoga. Buddhi yoga means bhakti yoga. This word, buddhi yoga, buddhi means intelligence. One who is very intelligent, he can take to Krishna consciousness. Therefore, bhakti yoga's another name is buddhi yoga. Buddhi yoga. Because buddhi yoga, there are many verses in the Bhagavad Gita you find. Just like Krishna says, Bonam Janmanavanti Janvanvan Krapadati Vasudiva Sarumiti Samahatma Sudulava. Krishna said uh, after many, many births, endeavor, because everyone is trying to happy. That is the struggle for existence. Why this struggle? To become happy. So sometimes they are karmis, sometimes they are gangis, sometimes they are yogis. Sometimes, as soon as he becomes bhakta, that is success. But so long he is not bhakta, but otherwise, one means gyanis, generally they are divided, one means gyanis, yogis. Therefore, Rupa Goswami has said, bhukti mukti siddhi vishasi javad vidivat tate tavad bhakti sukhas atra patham abhudayo. So long in one's heart there is a pishasi, 
Pisati means witch. Yes. The witch is there. Pisati. What is that Pisati? Bhukti, Mukti, Siddhi. Bhukti means karmi. To one who wants to enjoy this material world by working. That is called bhukti. Bhukta. I want to enjoy. Everyone is trying that. Struggle for this. Everyone is trying to. I want to enjoy this material world to the fullest extent. The struggle, going on, competition. That is called bhukti. And another mukti. Mukti means those who are disappointed. Disappointed must be, because nobody can be happy here with his karmi plan. That is not possible. So he will be disappointed. But disappointed when? After many, many vast struggle for existence, he will be disappointed. That's a fact. Therefore Krishna says, Bhavnam Janavnam. He continues to become karmi and sometimes jnani, sometimes yogi, to become happy. But he will be confused, he will be defeated. Nature is so strong. Therefore Krishna says, Bhavnam Janavnam. After many, many births of this struggle, Sometimes Tormi, sometimes Gyani, sometimes Yogi, sometimes something else. When one comes to be really wise, Gyanava, Mahama Prabhupada, he surrenders that. How he surrenders? Blindly? No. Vasudeva Sarvamiti, he at that time understands that Krishna is everything. Therefore, that is a big Mahapa. So Mahatma Sudhullo. It is very difficult to find out such a great person. Therefore, intelligent person, if he sees, Dekhe Shekha, if I understand that this person has surrendered to Krishna from many, many births, if that is the ultimate goal, why not myself surrender immediately? That is good. If one has to come to this point for perfection of life, why not my life be perfected in this life? Why is it away for many, many births? And that is Buddha. Intelligent. Krishna Jai Bhaje Sivarachatya. Unless one is exceptionally intelligent, he cannot take two Krishna consciousness. This is Buddha. Therefore, Krishna has described in Sankha Yoga that this is your duty. You are Khatriya. Why you are rejecting, fighting? In this way, in so many ways, the soul is immortal, the body is perishable. So your grandfather or your kinsman, they will not die. So this is analytical study from the material point of view. And as soon as one comes to the point of serving Krishna with love, without any understanding, just like fire, fire, you accept it without studying fire analytical. If you touch fire, it will end. It is that. It doesn't require to study fire. How, what is the composition of fire? This is knowledge, of course. But if you just like gopis in Vrindavan, they did not study what is Krishna. They did not care in Krishna. But they wanted to love Krishna. That is their only quality. They are ordinary village girls. Similarly, the cowherds boy, they were tending cows. They had no Vedanta knowledge or any higher education, not very uh, nicely cultured gentleman, village, cowherd's girl. But we did not know any other business than to love Krishna. That is what Jnana Sundar. Without any knowledge. They did not. They, they saw Narayan. Oh, here is Narayan. All right. But there is no love. Love is for Krishna. Even Nara and Pura and Nara, there is no love for them. They have respect. You can offer respect to anyone if you have no love. But love is a different thing. That was, that is the typical examples in Vrindavan. That is the ultimate goal of Buddhism. Thank you very much. Thank you.